Welcome back to my channel. I'm Neha Parashar, working in a healthcare company and based in Germany. In today's video, we are on fourth part of step three during IND preparation, and today I'm going to give you tips for conducting successful USFDA meetings. In the previous part of this video, we talked about what are these USFDA meetings and why they are so important and how to perform these meetings and what are the steps behind it. If you have not watched those videos till now, then the link for all the past videos have been given in the description box below. Now let's come to today's topic, how to conduct a successful USFDA meeting. I will discuss 24 such interesting tips with you and this video will include 10 tips that we need to follow before the actual date of meeting. 10 tips that we need to follow during the actual date of meeting and 4 tips that we need to follow after the meeting. I have split this entire video in two parts. In today's video, we will talk about the 10 tips before the actual date of meeting. And in next video, we will talk about the remaining 14 tips during and after the actual date of meeting. So let's start. But before we start these tips, first let me ask you one question. How do you define this word successful? If the meeting with FDA was successful or not, how do you define this? I consider the successful meeting as the one where you receive the guidance and clarity from the USFT on the topics you are looking for. It's not very important to receive the answers that we wanted to hear, right? But what is important is to receive the clarity. During these meetings, if we wanted to hear yes from FT on our approach, but if their answer is no, then also I consider this meeting as successful. How? Because now we know what could have gone wrong if we would have proceeded without FDA consultation. Now after receiving this clarity, we can take corrective actions very early in the development process, right? So getting clarity is the key. It doesn't matter if the feedback was positive or negative. As I said, I'll give 10 tips about what to do before FDA meetings. So let's start with that. What to do before FDA meetings? When you first decide that you want to have a meetings with FDA, the first and very important thing is that we should do our homework. So before requesting a meeting with FDA, we should make sure that we make use of all the publicly available information on the similar topics. Most of these topics or meeting minutes are publicly available on FDA website, right? Let me show how these meeting minutes available on US FDA website and how they look like. You can find these meeting minutes on FDA website, which is written here. Of course, they hide the confidential information as you can see the highlighted part in gray. From these meeting minutes, we can get to know the US FDA approach on the similar topics and it helps us to understand what is obvious and what is not obvious from US FDA point of view. So once we did our homework, the second important point is make a good planning. Planning is important everywhere, right? For everything, for anything. So same for US FTA meeting. Before submitting a meeting request to FTA, good planning is needed. This makes us to be more confident and better organized. We need to decide on activities that we should do prior to the meeting request. Create a clear timeline. Agree on the roles and responsibilities like who will moderate the discussion and who will be the key responder and who will be the note taker. All these responsibilities has to be aligned up front. Prepare the list of all the attendees for the meeting from your side. Once you are done with all this, then the third and the most important part which comes is make a precise and clear briefing package or meeting package. From previous video, we know what is briefing package. Briefing package is one of the most important part of your safety meetings. Therefore, we need to take excessive care before framing the questions in our meeting request as this will be our basis for the discussion during the meeting. During the preparation of this briefing book, we need to make sure that the questions are clear, crisp and well centered around what we want to gain from this meeting. It should not be too big or not too small. Ideally, between 20 to 50 pages along with the appendix should be sufficient. Avoid unclear and open-ended questions. And very importantly, it's always very difficult to answer the questions like what ifs or a hypothetical situations. So if you are asking such kind of hypothetical questions from FDA, then do not expect a precise answers from them as everything will be situational in that case, right? So better we ask them more practical questions and not the hypothetical ones and submit this briefing package on time and sufficient number of copies to avoid any kind of issues. Please note the very very important point is that for time 
Dear Padufa meetings and all Vasufa meetings, the briefing package needs to be sent along with the meeting request. And for rest, all types of meeting, the timeline for sending the briefing package is defined in the guidelines. So follow those instructions carefully. Now the fourth point is have an unbiased evaluation of your drug. When we work on a product, we get so much attached to it that we even ignore the obvious fault or risk in it. So it's very important that we detach ourselves from the product emotionally and just put ourselves into regulator's shoes. This will for sure help us understanding where we stand and how regulators will see it from their eyes. Then the fifth point is once FDA sends you the initial response to the question just before few days before the actual date of meeting, review these FDA's initial response carefully. When FDA send us the initial response on our questions one two days before the actual date of meeting, very often we are so eager to start working on our replies, right? However, it's really very very critical to be extra careful when reading these questions because if by mistake we overlook even a one exact word, it can lead to misinterpretation. Therefore, review all the comments for all the question as a whole and not a single response to specific questions. Then the sixth point is assign roles and responsibilities of backup person well in advance. Which team member will own which topic or question in front of FDA and will be ready for any question and answer during the meeting for all the instant and quick questions that should be aligned up front. I've seen some cases where the main responsible person had some personal issues at the day of meeting and he could not attend the meeting and the backup person was not fully prepared which led to a very awkward situation. Therefore, it's very important to have a main responsible person and a backup person fully prepared for each question to avoid any awkward situation during the meeting. Then the seventh point is make the list of all the counter and anticipated questions your backup positions on those questions and the responsible moderator. When you know what questions you will be discussing during the meeting, for each question decide who will speak to those questions, what counter questions or objections FDA can ask you, how will you respond to these counter questions and who will respond to it. Also make a list of what will be an ideal response for you what will be an okay response for you and if you are not getting any of these then how will you close that point. It's always useful that we make a short presentation and backup slide with data for these anticipated questions. It's better that we assign one person as a moderator who is familiar with the expertise of each employee so this moderator can direct the questions to the correct person. This way we can avoid multiple speakers are answering the same questions right. Then the eighth point is rehearse well. It is important to prepare a detailed script for the meeting including who will speak first, how will you introduce your team and how will the topic or questions will be passed to the other person. This will help to avoid any awkward situation where multiple people are talking over each other due to some confusion. It's important that we rehearse in the same way as it is the actual meeting day. Always remember four things. Practice 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 and practice practice makes us perfect right so we practice well and make sure that we as a complete team are on the same page then the ninth point is work in a close collaboration with the fda regulatory project manager fda project manager is there to help us right as a direct point of contact for any kind of communication so we should be in touch with this project manager in close collaboration and to agree on the agenda points also, if we have any last minute changes, for example, change in the list of attendees and so on, we should always inform FDA project manager in advance. Then the 10th point is provide the meeting handouts to the FDA team proactively. It's always good that if possible, we provide the meeting handout and slide to the FDA team proactively before the meeting. This will help them to know what we are going to speak and what is the content of our presentation. They can always go back to the previous slide and it will ease their work and make the meeting more efficient. Right? So these were the 10 tips before the actual meeting day. Now in the next video, we'll talk about 14 more tips, what to do during and after the FDA meeting day. But before we end this video, do you know 
what types of content goes in IND application? If you know the answer, then let me know in the comment section. But if not, then don't worry. I'll talk about the content of IND application in my next video. Till then, let's stay tuned.